All right, so I'm, I'm in my garage with my little extractor and I've thoroughly cleaned it. Nice stainless steel bucket. The cage is clean, everything's been cleaned. I cleaned it with uh, hot water and vinegar and then I rinse it off. I've got it plugged in, ready to roll. I'm gonna turn it on here. Ooh. Not supposed to do that, but anyway, with the top off, but anyhow. I'm in my garage right now. I've got, it's been fully ventilated and some bees got in, unfortunately, so there's gonna be a few bees buzzing around. And a lot of wasps around today too, so I gotta make sure to keep the door closed. Um, I've got this place fully ventilated. There's no uh, fumes in here, no gasoline or anything like that. It's all nice and, it doesn't look very nice in here, but it's, uh, it's clean. And I've got my, uh, where's my honey boxes? So I'm gonna start digging through those and start extracting. So we'll see how it goes. So I've got my first three frames in there. I'm gonna see how it goes. Um, I think you might actually be able to get more out of the honey quicker if you just use three frames sometimes instead of six. But anyway, here we go. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna slowly just the little knobby. This is variable speed, and that's full speed. And you slowly move it up on variable speed. And you shouldn't do this with the top off, but this is just for demonstration. Anyway, I gotta put the top on because this is this honey is already attracting bees and wasps that are in here. Okay, just for fun, and because I'm going absolutely bonkers working from home this week, staring at a computer screen all day, really putting my higher education to good use, I'm going to take a break from that and see, oh, look at this. So anyone who tuned in yesterday knows that I put a, an escape board on this hive yesterday to remove the bees from their honey, and check it out. Just compare this to the video that I posted yesterday, or, well, at least on my blog, um, you'll see, oh, look at that honey, it's beautiful. You'll see that th this, this honey super and the one beneath it were full of bees. Less than 24 hours later, they're all gone. Not all the bees do that. Sometimes they, there's one over there actually, didn't, uh, they didn't leave the hive yet. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe the queen is in there or maybe the brood is in there. But anyway, look at all that honey. Can you see down there? Anyhow, good stuff. Now these are the the thick some of the thick frames that I had in my uh, one of my hides. I only had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames, and that's because they have that extra space creates some super thick comb. <clears throat> that's that's really really heavy. And this is how I uh, decap my honey. This only works with uh, with what are called dry cappings. Um, Dry cappings are basically, imagine a mason jar or a jam jar, and each one of these cells is the jar, and when you, they put a, they seal it with wax, uh, with, uh, that's the lid of the jar, and some of the jars are <laughs> full all the way, and the, and the honey is squishing up against the inside of the jar, and that would be a wet capping, because it's touching the, the honey inside. And this is a dry capping, and it's basically a lid on a mason jar, um, but the honey isn't touching the, uh, the wax capping, the lid. And so that's dry. And so because it's not actually touching the honey, uh, it melts off really quickly. Whereas if it was just, if the honey was uh, backing the, 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 the capping, it, wouldn't, it really wouldn't melt at all. It doesn't really work well at all. And so you got to scrape it off or use one of the more traditional methods of using a Hot knife. This is a, a gunky, dirty, old, heated decapping knife, and I never use it. <clears throat> I use this. You got a, it's a heat, heat gun. Two settings, high and low. Put it on high, and off we go. 
Now I'm filming this and doing this, so it's not a really good demonstration, but you get the idea. And there's, doesn't, it doesn't really heat the honey, it just melts the wax. Um, heated honey uh, isn't really good for honey, it does all kinds of things, but this is nothing like that. It just, uh, there's a wasp. It just lightly kisses the, the wax, just enough to quickly melt it. I mean, it takes, it takes half a second, right? It doesn't heat up the, the, it really doesn't heat up the honey at all. Here you can see all the, the cappings have been melted and that wax quickly dries and hardens but it hardens even if it hardens over the cell and seems to seal the cell back in it doesn't that it's it's just loose it'll 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 flop that that little bit of wax will fly right out of the out of the comb and there's still a little bit of you know misses a, I miss a few cells so I just use my old fork let's give it a good scrape <coughs> And that's how it goes. And when it's done, it often looks like this. So you can see there's still a little bit of melted wax, you know, in those cells. It doesn't completely open the cells all the way, but it it it, it all that uh, it, it prevent it, it saves me the trouble of having to deal with all that wax afterwards. And I'll just put these over the inner covers of some hives with full of bees. They'll clean it all up. And once the comb is dry, I'll just go store it, and off we go. Wait for next year. Let's take a taste. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. Oh man. When it first comes out of the frames, it just the honey feels it tastes so much sweeter than it than it normally does. Mmm. Mmm, daddy. Good stuff. So these are some honey supers that have been extracted. These uh, frames they used to have honey in them, but it's all been whipped out through the extraction process. And I usually put these uh, these wet, empty frames back into the hives and let the bees clean it up inside the hive. But it, I find that it actually is a lot quicker just to leave it out like this. So I've got this a uh, fair distance from the hive, so or from my hive, so that it's shouldn't trigger too much of a crazy feeding frenzy or robbing frenzy and they'll they'll get all the honey out of that and they'll clean that all up in a day whereas sometimes when I just put them inside the hive it takes it takes a lot longer than a day but th with all of them going at it this will be this will be cleaned up by tomorrow so that's basically what I want and then all the little bit of wax cappings and things will fall to the bottom, not the cappings, but just leftover debris of wax will fall to the bottom and then it'll be all dried up and then I'll get to melt it and use it and off we go. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing this year anyway. My camera is fogging up in the humidity right now, but uh, let's just go over this little doodad here. If you can see, come on, okay, we can the camera won't focus because it's too too much humidity in here but this is variable speed and this is full speed on the extractor so you so when it's on variable speed speed you just give it a little boop right and then the deal is you slowly speed it up get get get, get it going faster and faster so that if there's any imbalance in the frames if one frame has got more honey than another then the one with the most frame the most honey will spit out that honey and it'll gradually balance itself and then as it balances you speed up the speed it up okay 
right, so that's what happens. It gets, it gets to a fast speed, the fastest variable speed. And then once it's whipping at the variable speed and it's not jiggling, jaggling all over the place, then you hit the full button and it goes into turbo mode and it really starts to spin. So I'm just going to demonstrate that right now. Oops, hold on. Ah, whoop, okay, hold on. There we go. This is his variable speed. You can slowly get it going. And then we're going to go boop, I'm going into this turbo mode. And I don't feel comfortable with that thing open like that, so I'm just going to keep it uh, closed. Um, because if a frame breaks or flies to pieces, it could be a mess. And it could flat, fl fly in my face. So here we go, here we go, do it again. And then when you want to shut it down, is you do the opposite procedure. You, you turn off the full, you switch it to variable, and variable will, will be on full speed at that point, and then you slowly turn it down, and, not, and you're good to go. And when I want to remove the frames, I just turn on the little variable button, get it going to slow speed until I get the frame exactly where I want it, and then I pull it out and off we go. And that's the last of the honey boxes. Um, I had... Uh, I think there's two missing, two or three missing. Two? I can't remember now. Anyhow, uh, yeah, two more missing. Two mediums are missing. So I got five mediums and two shallows this year, and those shallows weren't really full, and the wind is probably blowing all over this mic. But um, yeah, that's pretty good. It's the best I've done since I've had uh, bees in flat rock anyway. I used to get uh, two harvests, two honey harvests a year. I would get one in July and I would get one in September, and now I only get them in September. But good enough, you know, it's, it's still fun, I guess. Now I'm getting the final bit of uh, honey out of the extractor by tipping it. Gonna give it a good tip. There's a fair bit that, that stays down in the reservoir, the bottom of the reservoir. So I'm gonna try to tip that as high as I can without tipping it over. And get the last bit of honey. Ooh, I bet it's gonna taste good too. Let's see. Ooh. Boy, it really it tastes different coming right out of the extractor. It seems extremely sweet compared to the rest of the time, rest of the year when I take it out of the bottle.